Clem, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to have you all here. Thank you all for joining me. My name is Clementina Amajo, and I'm in work and study group nine, actually. So um, the objective of this session, like, like we've communicated, is to we want, we are here to talk about career planning and career progression, everything around it. You know, if you look at me, initially at the beginning of this, um, the work and study community group, we conducted a survey and the feedback was really around career planning and career progression. So that's why we have this session. And I know that we have fantastic facilitators who will do absolute justice to the subject matter. And how, so we're gonna start immediately, it's six o'clock. We're gonna start immediately and we'll start with a welcome address from our governor. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Clementina, for the uh, opening. Um, I want to say thank you to Indidi and Bukumi for taking time out of their busy schedule to um, join us this evening. We are super excited that you were able to make it and we are expectant that we are going to learn a whole lot from you. My part is here. I'm ready to write as much as I can from this session. Um, so let me let me say something about how I met um, Indidi and Bukumi. I met the two of them around um, 2019, in the third quarter of 2019. And that was when um, we were in the pilot session of the community group. And I can assure everybody that meeting them has been um, a plus to my life personally and to my career. Indeed, is someone that um, when you have an engagement with her, you don't you don't remain the same. Her strength is amazing. She she she. I, I mean, I always try to figure out how she combines the dedication to her work with her career, and she's doing it so so successfully. And so also is Bukumi. Bukumi is a professional. Although Bukumi is my competitor. But it's a professional that I, I really admire. And I like the way, you know, Bukumi is, is insights when you, when, you, when you have issues to discuss. Bukumi's insights are always, you know, something to take away with. I'm really happy that um, they were able to join us. And I believe that at the end of the session, we would have been able to achieve our objectives. Everybody will be clear and learn many things about how to plan their career and progression. I'm going back to what I said about the community group. In the community group, there's opportunity to meet with a lot of people. These relationships are vital. I mean, if I look at my relationship today, I don't know the kind, I mean, the, the, even though I've not met them for too long, a time is less than two years, but I can, I, I can say that what I've gleaned from these relationships is beyond some of the relationships that I've had for a long time. And that's because we have the same vision, we have the same passion, we have things that are driving us. And that is the benefit of the community group. And I'll use this opportunity to say that we should not take for granted the people that we are meeting on the community group. So whether we are meeting them physically or whether we are meeting them across, but whether virtually, just take hold of this relationship because they are going to serve you for a long time. Thank you very much, Indi and Um, And thank you very much, Clem. Over to you. Great. Thank you very much, um, Inka. So we're just going to go straight on to um, the, uh, the conversation. And we're going to begin with career planning. And so I'm going to take the citation right now for our first facilitator. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to walk you through the profile of our first facilitator that's Bukumi Olani Yoni. Uh, Bukumi Olani Yoni is a global mobility services expert 
and a manager in the People Services Group of Tax Regulatory and one second. Yes, okay, yes. So I'm going to take it again. Bukumi Alani Yonu is a global mobility services expert and a manager in the People Services Group of the Tax Regulatory and People Services Division of KPMG in Nigeria. He has garnered over 11 years professional experience in business advisory projects for various entities, delivering value adding results with industry leading practices. His areas of specialization cut across immigration advisory and compliance services, as well as administrative and business support services, including conducting cost of living survey and country briefing. Bukumi has provided advisory services to various organizations in different industries, including aviation, oil and gas, power, telecommunications, e-commerce, banking, information technology, as well as construction and advertising. He currently manages the immigration portfolio of a wide range of clients with a combined expert rate strength of more than 400. He's a member of the Learning and Development Group of the People Services Unit of KPMG Nigeria and that of the People Strategy Team of KPMG Global Immigration Services. In addition to this, he represents KPMG Nigeria on the committee established by the Federal Ministry of Interior, Abuja, to review the handbook on expatriate cultural management. Bukumi is a graduate of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, and an associate of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management of Nigeria, CIPM. He enjoys interacting with people which aligns with what um, Olayinka said. He enjoys watching fish shows, football, singing, and reading. Bukumi is married and he is blessed with a son and a daughter. Thank you for honoring our invitation today and we are really glad to have you here. Thank you. You're muted. I'm projecting from a different device. I'm speaking from a different device. <laughs> yeah, just before you know, the citation was read, I found that I, I couldn't share my screen. So if I could just request for the host to grant me the access to do that, maybe maybe a quick post or uh, just uh, enable the settings. Okay, so that will, that will help. Okay, so but that, while that is being done, I'd like to say it's, it's a privilege to be here again. I, I've had the privilege to share at uh, some of the work and study groups in the past. And so I must have said something meaningful <laughs> for them to record me back. Maybe if I had sown some seeds now, that's not talking about sowing seeds, I've sown some seeds that uh, people are still struggling with uh, the food. They are said, please, oh, just please keep that guy away from us before the guy will come and create problems. So thanks, Inka. And this is a combined session, so it's quite a privilege to have. And I also like to uh, recognize the presence of now, this is sounding like a politician now. Recognize the presence of Didi. Um, you know, we, are, we, are, we are where we meet. So um, it's a privilege to be able to speak on the same stage with her. She's someone I also admire uh, a lot. Uh, so we we'll get to hear from her. We have very limited time, so I think I better get into my slides now. Uh, let me check whether I still cannot share. So I have two profiles there. So in case you maybe you've enabled one. So everywhere you see Bukumi, oh, just, okay. so just, I... activate all the, just activate all the Bukumis there. Okay. You know, when, when I have, when I remember my name, it makes me remember that in the firm, um, KPMG where I worked, there was a time that I was the only Bukumi in the whole of KPMG Global. You know? And I used to check it. I saw the one young man joined the firm, and his name is also Bukumi. And I said, okay, oh what's going on now? What's all this? Why have you taken you know, my shine? No, not exactly taking my shine. Why have you... Make, made us more but the guy is smart. He was also in my group, funny enough. It's a people's services group until recently. We're still in the firm. Uh, so, and then other people think I'm a woman. Uh, there's a client of mine that called me at some point and I said hello. I met him before and I was surprised I acted that way because I met him. I said hello, sir. 
And the guy said, uh, is this Bukumi? I said, yes. I said, you thought Bukumi is a lady. I said, no, because I'm, I'm, I'm a man. So, okay, so great, like I share now. So what I usually like is I like to put the flyer as my first, as my first side, so I can see myself. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this. Now, the truth is this, and I have to be very sincere. Um, what we have to talk about today, it's, it's quite mad, it's quite light. light. Uh, so the time that we have allocated, it, it's, quite, um, it's quite small. But what, we, what I will try to do for my hand, and I believe that Didi will try to do the same thing, is to try my support to focus on the key points. Um, interestingly, some of the things we will stay my overlap. So I'm happy that I'm going first. <laughs> so that Didi would have, would have gone through all my slides and have been wondering what I said. So Didi, in case I, I didn't see your slides before today, so you know that I didn't like. But in case I overlap into your, your slide, please forgive me. But I guess I'll, you know, we'll try my as well to stay on, on a different lane so we don't, we don't collide. But career planning and progression are quite uh, interwoven. Uh, but, but I will try as much as well to focus on the area that has to do with planning. Interestingly, uh, I think just tell me, asked me to talk about career planning. She also told me to talk, talk about how to uh, conduct a self-appraisal, self which is also a critical aspect of, uh, um, you know, growing our careers. So let me get into the meat of the, of the slides. So I have slides to share. Um, I'll be looking at the career planning process and I'll be also be looking at how do you define your career path. I did some research around this. So what I'll probably also do is after this, I'll share the slide and you can also perhaps share some links to some helpful materials that you can read further um, for that to get some additional in, insights on this. And then how to evaluate your career uh, options. You need to evaluate your career options and then take action to achieve your career goal. You have to be deliberate, um, making progress in career. And we're all in that in that journey. Even you and uh, I am I'm in that journey. It is in that journey. There's no end to it. We keep, keep, we keep pushing. If you stop pushing, then you start degrading. If you stop pushing, then you start going down because the world is moving. So you will just be passed by. It's like people going in any ways and someone just stops. Other people, in fact, you have races where they'll say the person has lapped the other people that are running. And you know, since all these long distance races, that, that does happen. And then how do you conduct or write a more effective set of I'll try as much as well to make this interesting, try to give examples from my experience. I hope I do that well, because at the time stories take time to tell. And then some self-revelation do's and don'ts. Okay. So the career planning process, before I go further into this, I'd just like to say quickly that very, very important in looking at career or even planning a career, I mean, when you say you want to have a plan, what is a plan? So someone wants to get married. So you want to have a plan to move from being unmarried to married. So there's a current state and there's a desire state. So you must have something you're looking forward to. And I will talk about the goals. So I'll get into that sort of thing. But you're, there's a current state and a desire state. So you're, you want to move from the current state to a desire state. So the things in between, be the things that will form the plan. So I think that, that's that's quite easy to understand. And then I'd like to just uh, say quickly, the current plan progress involves taking the time to decide what your career goals are and how you will get there. It's, it seeks to answer the, I'll, I'll talk about it, the WH questions. What, how, why, when, how? But the critical question you must answer at this stage right now is, um, all are critical. But let me say one of the critical questions is the how. I want to go from Lagos to Abuja. How would I how would I get to Abuja? I could decide to go by road. I could decide to go by hair. I could decide to go by, is there a train? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe the train will take you to some other places. I could decide to walk. Like some people that were walking for certain, certain political figures at some point. So I could decide to walk. Um, so now that means it also speaks to choices. So your goals are there, but you have the ability to control how you decide to achieve those goals. And the how could also impact the when. So now in doing this, you might engage in the place on your own, or you could engage in guidance or career counsel. You could sit with someone to you know, help you identify the things that are important to you. And then you could start the process by evaluating 
uh, by changing, for example, a career planning process can be a process that starts when you want to reevaluate your current state. So you could be at a state, and then that's why you hear things people say they, they, they career change. So people are at a particular point, they just find the, they don't they then find out that it appears as if the point that they have will not get them to where they actually desire to be. So they have to sit down and make that switch. People call some people call it the career switch. So we have different levels. Some some people, and there is no, it is not wrong for people to get to a point. For example, some of you are on this call, I'm sounding like a pastor now. <laughs> so yeah, in this call, and you might be at a stage where what you need to do is to do it, make a switch. And you are afraid to make a switch. And I want to encourage you, don't be afraid to make that plunge. But no, there are things you need to evaluate. I'm not, I'm not saying that right now, after this call, you say, when you said, don't be afraid, that just go and resign with this disclaimer. <laughs> but don't be afraid to make that plunge. Especially when you've evaluated, you've counted the cost, and you see that where you are will not get you to where you desire to be. Don't be afraid. Now, just go further to say, how do you define your career path and goals? Now, to, to, to get into defining your career path and goals, one thing is important. One thing is needful, needful. Whatever you decide to do, and I will this my quote, the quote that I came up with from certain experience that you must be driven by a desire to add value, meet a need, or solve a problem. Now, adding value, I put a colon, adding value means meeting a need or solving a problem. If that does not drive you, then you have not started the journey at all. The world is looking for people that will solve problems. People get paid for the value that they bring to the table. Many people want to get value from the table, but they are not bringing anything to the table. If you do not bring to the table, you cannot take from the table. And there's a funny story you know, when I was, wait, before I go for that, before I start being like an inspirational teacher now, think how many more minutes do I have left? How many more minutes do I have left? Um, I think about 13. The 13, right? 13. Yes. Now it's reduced to 12. OK. If you do not bring anything to the table, please. Someone who does not bring to the table, I want to take, it's a robber. It's an, it's an, it's an, it's an, a hand robber. That means you're going to take where you have not sold. So whatever you do, please, whether you are reevaluating your career choices right now, be driven by a desire to add value. Whatever it is, your goals, your passions, your even CSR, people that do CSR, there is value that they had and there's value that they get in return. NGOs, it's not just that people are trying to just throw money all around you. And I will say this, even in charity, in the US, if you, if you give money to charity, you can use it to reduce your taxes. <laughs> so at times, some of these guys, I'm not saying that some of them don't do charity from a very good my point of view. But the truth is, you can actually use charity to reduce your taxes. You can use it to, to reduce your taxable income, the, the income that will target the taxes. So in the end, it's a race to add value. You must be driven by that to add value. So whether you want to change your, your career path, it must be driven. I want to add more value. Where can I add value? What do I have that can I, that I can use to add value? Where are the opportunities for me to add value? Now, in adding value, you need to know yourself. Identify, you need to come to the point of view, identifying what your vision is, what drives you. Now, when people talk about vision, it's not something that has to be very cryptic or something complicated. Just ask yourself, what drives me? What are the things that, I, that, that drives me, that I, I wake up thinking about? I, I keep thinking about, what are my values? When you talk about values, what are the things that I hold very important? It could be integrity for some people. Some people, it could be family values. Now, I'll, and I'll make it as practical. For example, for some people, they like to spend time with family. So some career choices may not be for them. If they, like, they want to you know, spend time a lot with their family. I'm not saying that people who are even involved in career don't spend time with family, but at times some people, and some people may, it may just be, going into something that they spend a, a bit of time outside and then they spend more time doing other things, other things that, that will fuel that, that, that fuels their passion, that they find happiness in doing. And because somebody else finds the happiness in something else, doesn't mean you should also find happiness in that same thing. 
you are not the same. The DNA of everybody is different. Now, your interests, your skills, your traits. Now, some of these things we pick them up. So, you know, our environment influences how we are, you know, we acquire some of these things. So these things could change. But in evaluating where you want to go, you can ask yourself, where I, I, where I'm high currently, are there skills I need to acquire that will help me make the move that I desire to make? Uh, Didi will talk about career progression, so she will probably focus a bit on that. So let me move on quickly. It says, think about the answer to these questions. What, which of my core values are most important to your choice? Think about it. What drives you and what are the things you hold there in life? Think about it. Because I don't have time, I can't really do it. And then what are the occupations that interest you? What are the things that interest you? You, you, just, you just have a fancy boy. Now, now, the truth is that something that may interest you, you may not have the capability to do those things now, but doesn't mean that you can't do those things in the future. And that will talk, that will speak to there's a part, there's a part that uh, you can actually talk about the place of acquiring skills. And I'm so glad that I am in work and study group because people are here because they want to acquire skills. Now, I want to assume that you're acquiring skills because you have an end goal in mind. Now, there are times that people just go and acquire a skill or acquire a qualification. When I say skill, I mean the qualification. So, if I use it, I interchange it. Now, because somebody else say, ah, they are doing master, oh, yeah, let me go and do master. You don't go and do masters or get a professional qualification because everybody else is doing it. No. Do it because you have an end game. And you think that there's a positioning that you want to place yourself in that will help you take advantage of certain opportunities. For example, if you don't know how to drive, if somebody gives you, if somebody is looking for somebody to act, that's why it's tricky. Let's just know looking for somebody to go, take up a role. Let me use it. Role. And then you actually have acquired that skill at some point. You may not be using it at that point in time. But it's well, you, you have this position, right? And okay, because you have that position, that means you have the basis. Oh, yeah, come, let's give it up. For somebody who else who doesn't have the qualification, they say, oh, that come that you don't have it. Uh, somebody else has it. The person who has it will get it. For example, right now in my career, I don't do call HR work, but I told myself that the, th the things that I see myself doing, the kind of things that I'm passionate about are related to people. So I decided I was going to go and get certified as a personnel person. And I so I went to write CIPM. And, and I have that qualification. And that has helped me in certain ways, in certain things. Some things I know as a result of that, that qualification. Some things I know, some exposures that I have, some networks that I belong to are because I became, uh, as a result of the fact that I became a chapter uh, of asset management. So you need to think about it. So in case there's an exam that you have read right now and you have not evaluated the purpose of that exam, it's not too late to say, yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, hey, this is not looking like it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you are working as a certain group, maybe it's a new manager's group you need to do. Now it's too late, but I'm just telling you that you, you have to be deliberate. You don't just go and, there's somebody who wrote on social media, she was complaining. She said that she had gotten a certification and the, the yearly dues were becoming important into her because she, was, she wasn't getting value from that certification. So she asked her, why did I even go and get it? So don't be like that person. Let me run quickly. I have just about six minutes. Left. Evaluate your career options. I'll read through this because of time. Evaluate the options that are available to you based on your current position. What choices do you have right now? What does each one involve? Look at the pros and cons, cons of, of the choices. Consider the challenges you may face and how you can handle them, you know, the choices you have. Let me jump to it. Search. Now, look out for new challenges at work. And this is very important. Don't be the person that will be waiting for until they give you a task. Even if you don't know how to do something, Say you will find out. Somebody says, ah, uh, who can help us with this thing? Because you think you don't know, you say, I mean, I don't know. What if, yes, I may not know, but let me get involved. In the process of getting involved, you can learn how to do it. Now, this may not work for urgent and emergency things, so, but you can tag along. The person who knows how to do it, go and find out. Learn from that person. When the opportunity comes up next time, you have, a, you have, a, you have an anchor to hold on to. So, and that is those are the things that will set you apart, that will make you start acquiring the skills that will take you to where you want to go. He said, which of your skills or interests will help you develop and advance? Which of the ones you have now and which are the ones you, you, you will need to acquire will help you take. Now, this one, I love this one. Consider going back to school. At times, you might even need to resign from your place of work and say, this is not working. Oh yeah, CFA, oh yeah, or MBA. 
That's where we are going to. And then you go and get it because that may be the skill. I, and that's why it's important to understand the requirements for the next level that you want to get in. Because that's what will help you position yourself properly to know what are the things you need to do. I'm really running against time. But, but you can still hear me, right? You can hear somebody in the background. Oh, I think we have some interruption. If you also can also help us mute it, please. Okay, let me just continue. You need to identify the short term and long term goals. Steps, Don't sorry, that you need to take. <laughs> you need to identify. Okay. What's your name? Oh, What's please help us. So. Oh, please mm -hmm. help us. So. Please, can you mute um, everyone? Okay, I think the person yeah, is, I think person is gone now. I think person is gone now. Thank you. Since you need to develop a plan to make your options a reality, identify the short and long term steps you need to take. Create deadlines. Now, whatever you don't have a deadline for, you will likely not achieve it. You need to write, and you need to, it's important to write things down. Don't just have it in your mind. Write things down. When do I want to do this? When do I want to do this? Now, all the times in the office, I Okay, I think it's back on. Hello, everyone. Sincere apologies. I think we lost our facilitator at some point, but um, I can see he's back on. Just let's just give him a few minutes. Maybe oh, I am so. I am. I'm, I'm on. Apparently, my phone picked up the data connection in the house. I'm so sorry. And that one was just loading. I'm sorry. So let me quickly run through this. So, why did you lose me, please? Was it that uh, conducting yourself appraisal? Yes. Where did you lose me? Yes, conducting deadlines. We can't, we can't see your slide right now. You can't see my slide, right? We can't mm. see your screen. Could you please share your screen? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm very sorry for that network issue. So what happened was that as soon as power came back, my system automatically went and picked a network in the house, which was just loading. Now I'm eating into the this time. Didi, I'm sorry. But can you hear my, can you see my screen now? 
I believe you can see my screen now, right? You, you yes, should be able to yes, see my screen. Yes, so yes, can we see. can see your screen. Yeah. Yes, you can see the screen. Okay, that lady that said, yes, we can see the screen. Hope, I hope this is not boring. <laughs> it sounded like you can see the screen. Please, let's just move on. Okay, let me continue. I'll just wrap up quickly because my time is up. So I was talking about conducting a self-appraisal. And I said that you need to identify clear goals. What do you want to achieve? And you need to identify data-driven goals because the problem is that many people identify goals that are ambiguous. And so people give them ambiguous ratings. Now, if you identify data giving goals that can be qualified, when you have been evaluated, you can defend, you can even push back and say, ah, these are the goals that we agreed now. I achieved it. Why am I not getting the rating that you deserve? But if your goals are in the air and say, uh, I, I aim to um, ensure that my clients are happy, how do you quantify, <laughs> how do you quantify that your clients are happy? Okay, now my time is up. They have sent me a message. So, but just, Okay, I just have to stop then since since my I got a message that my time is up, so I, I, I don't want to disrespect uh, the uh, finish up now. Let me continue. Five minutes more. <laughs> yes. Glenn, please. Okay. Um, can you please let him finish up? Okay, okay. So I'll just run to do this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a consultant, so I report to people. So conduct a self appraisal. Know how the self appraisal is going to be used. Write out a list of your accomplishments. Your accomplishment quantifiable. Don't say, uh, my, I may show my clients are happy. In what way? Based on, you can say something that based on feedback received from um, the survey that was conducted, and you have the survey results. Now, I may not be able to say something that we applied to all this because I don't know the industry that everybody here works. But just make sure that you have quantifiable and tangible ways to measure your performance. For example, one of the ways my performance is measured is in terms of revenue that I bring. So I will have to go and say the revenue that I hand from each of my clients. So, but you need to find a way to tie data to your accomplishments. Don't make it vague or else people will give you vague ratings. Because you can push back. You will have delivered the push back if you are not satisfied with your rating. Now, you need to write out a list of your accomplishments. And which means that when you are accomplishing things, you have a way to record those accomplishments. It is not at the point when you are writing your self-evaluation that you, you may not remember so many things. So have an accomplishment note or something, whatever it is that you do. Apart from the fact that it helps you in terms of evaluation, it also helps you to refer to the things that you've achieved and makes you confident that you can even achieve much more. Other analytics are talking about data. Data talks. Now you're accomplishing this, then you're accomplishing that data to support that. Some that you may not be able to support, but you'll be able to at least talk about them in low terms. Align your review with your managers or team goals. Now, it is not about you. Virtually all of us, even if you are, okay, maybe you are a one-man business or a one-man business, but virtually all of us probably work in environments where you report to some, somebody, you know, you report somebody else. Your goals must align with your manager's goals. If you are not helping to reduce the pressure on your manager, you are not doing your work. I was having a discussion with one of my managers several years ago. He said, Bukumi, what I want you to focus on is reducing the pressure on me. I said, yes, it is your pressure, Abby. I said, I will make this my almost redundant. And for every rating that I had subsequently, the guy will write blowing terms because most of the time the clients won't call him. If a client calls the guy, he can't ask me, me what has happened. There must have been a major issue that the client thinks I can't handle for the client to reach out to me. So align your goals, try and ask your client, your manager, what are the things that keep you away? What are the, how can I make your work easy? The guy will smile and say, hey, you want to make your work easy? Not like you want to take his job. Can I make your work so that you can go and do other things and become the C suit that you want to be, or you know, go and get other things done? And then your self appraisal should consist of your treating your own. There has to be areas of improvement. I remember when one of my team members wrote a self appraisal for herself and she didn't put area of improvement. <laughs> I said, Calm down now, nah. no area of improvement, and you didn't meet the highest rating. Okay, yeah, let's sit down and we start identifying okay, these are the things you need to do. There has to be area of improvement now. There has to be. If you didn't quite reach out objectives, don't point fingers. Make it about you. Always ask yourself, what could I have done better? And then ask for growth opportunities. Have those engagements. What are the other things I can do? What, how can I become better at my work? Which talks about seeking feedback consistently. And your desire for the work to, to expand your skill set is very important. Quickly, the last um, part of my presentation, your evaluation do's and do's. 
do the corporate feedback when you, that you have received from others. Ask other people about your performance. Don't just think about yourself. Because when you've also gotten feedback about other people, about the performance from other people, you can write it down. You can incorporate it. Don't just have a list. You know, think about it, write it, let the review talk fully. Prioritize, focus on the highlights when you come to achievements. And if there are major concerns, your challenges, have a way that you talk about them without putting yourself down. Now, don't make typos too, because it just deflects from the focus of what you're trying to do. And try to get a second opinion. Ask people, what do you think about me? What else can I do? People that will give you, not people that will suck up to you, people that will give you honest feedback. Bukumi, we can't hear you. It appears you are muted. Oh, somebody muted everybody. So that's what okay. happened. So I said on a final note, writing a self-review doesn't have to be a dreaded job. Organize yourself before you begin. Put together data. Data is very important. Not only that, in fact, there was a particular evaluation that we're doing for somebody, and I was one reading it. As I was reading it, I was giving examples. I have examples. In the case of this client, this is what I did. In the case of this client, this is what I did. And the partner that was there said, I'm enjoying this. By the time I proposed outstanding performance rating, everybody just accepted it. Nobody rejected it. It was so easy for it to go through. If it's a struggle for your performance rating to be justified, then you are not doing something well. Respect your self evaluation. On that note, I'd like to say thank you so much, everyone. Sorry about the technical issues, but I hope that you did take one or two points from this, and I'll be happy to take questions during the question and answer session. Thank you, Yinka. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, um, Bukumi, Mr. Bukumi. Thank you so much for this presentation. Can everyone hear me, please? Confirm. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, 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 we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. This yes, was very insightful. Um, please, if you have questions, um, this would be a good time to just write them down. We're going to have a session where um, we'll take the questions and then our facilitators um, would answer giving a chance to answer. So just by getting your questions ready, um, if you want to drop them on the chat, it's fine. If you want to write them down to ask later, um, that would be also, that would be good as well. So we're going to, we're getting on to the next section. I'm going to be introducing our next facilitator. Um, so we're still talking about career planning and progression, career planning and career progression. So Mr. Bukumi has taken career planning and then our next facilitator, Ndide Okono, is going to be taking career progression. So I'm going to be reading her profile. Ndide Okono is an experienced banker with over 20 years professional experience across corporate, retail, and commercial banking. Ndide is also skilled in change management, business strategy, and credit analysis. She's currently the head, the divisional head, South South Region Guarantee Trust Bank. Indeed, is a graduate of the University of Nigeria and Soka, a chartered accountant, um, an associate of the Chartered Institute of Bankers, and she holds an MBA from Heriot Watch University. She is often described as driven, determined, passionate, and results oriented. Indeed, is happily married and blessed with children. Um, I know it's a virtual session, but please let's um, put our hands together as we invite Indeed Okono to take on her session. You can just clap in the chat room, don't worry. You're very welcome, Ma. We're glad to have you in this session today. So if you would let hey. me share my slide. I'm, I'm disabled at the moment. Can everyone hear me? OK, Clem, please, can, can everyone you? Hear me? We can hear you, indeed. We can hear you, we can hear you. Yes, yes. Yes, we can, we can hear you. I can hear Great. you. Great. Um, Clementine, now please can, can I take a co-host so she can share her screen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Clem, please, can you grant her access to share her screen? Okay, let's see. 
Okay, good evening, everyone. I guess you can see my slide. Can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Yes, yes we, can. We, we can see. Oh, yes, okay. yes. I think the Victoria here speaks to um, maybe where yes, some. Yes, of you can see the slide. Um, where our minds are. Um, and we'll be talking about career progression. We'll just dive right in. Um, just a quick intro. I know whenever people introduce me, they like to talk about the academics and the experience. But you know, I think it's important that you know that I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, I'm a mother before I'm a leader. Okay? So I'm really just like you. All right? So um, a, a lot of times when I speak, I would rather speak, I, I typically teach from my own experience. Um, and what I'd like to happen is that after this conversation, and I'm really looking forward to the Q&A, and what we're gonna be doing now is to set the tone, but after the conversation, that you can take something and run with it. So making immediate impact is very important to me talking about things that maybe now or much later you will find relatable in the course of your career you will remember and it will cause you to take an action so we will be as practical as possible and i will share what i'm sharing with you really is, is my own experience in my over 20 year um, career so just to to really um um, to really maybe help us situate this conversation, what really is career development or progression? So for me, it would be, I mean, this definition is up, the progress and actions that you take throughout your lifetime, which is um, the period that your career lasts, your useful life, um, relating to your occupation. Remember I said, we're just setting the tone for the Q and A's. Um, so let's quickly look at how people's career typically look. So I have on the axis to the left, the, the career type one, as I call it. Some people will spend their lifetime as we have seen in that definition in five different industries or less um, will spend their lifetime in five different companies or less. And in the course of their years on each job, you will find um, varying colorations. Some are gonna have extremely colorful, some will be drab, but as they progress, you will see that they have less time to do anything that they want to do to actualize their life's goals, to create the memories that they desire, to build a legacy. Every time they move, they have less time to utilize in actualizing those goals. Now, this is very linear. For some people, it will be a stomp in the first company, a long stay in the second and a stomp at the end. So it, it will vary with different people. Now, this is someone who's typically moved around quite a bit. Let's look at another person's career. In this basket, you find, okay, look, this guy has gone to three industries. He's or spent time in three, three companies in the course of his career. And you know, it, it's been slow and steady for him wins the race in each of those careers. Probably in terms of rank, ranking, when you look at each of the blocks, you know, he's entered into um, um, officer role, manager role, into top management, you know, he's just cruised quietly along the way and he, he's just kept it tight. Now look at this guy. In the course of his career, he has had <laughs> extremely colorful stay in one career. And I dare say this career type three describes me in a very interesting way. And I often get the question, I mean, I've only ever worked in Guarantee Trust. Yeah, it's over 20 years. I have a Rolex to show for it. <laughs> anyway, so um, over 20 years, I have stayed in Guarantee Trust. 
I've enjoyed myself while there, but my career has been very colorful. So in the course of my career, I have um, started my career in Lagos, moved to Abuja. Four years ago, I was asked to come do work in, in some challenging work in the South South in Portacot, which is why I'm here. While I was in Abuja, I was covering, I was strictly in Abuja at a point. And at some point I was covering retail in Abuja and the North Central States. So I was covering uh, Makodi, um, Nasarawa, Jaws, while I was sitting in Abuja. Um, right now I'm covering um, commercial banking and I'm doing, um, um, Port Harcourt, Uyo Kalaba, Yenogwa, um, Wari, and Sapele. So I've had different roles, different opportunities. You know, my, my, my career in Guarantee Trust hasn't just been static. You know, it's been very colorful. And I, I hope that I will have my second career. So a lot of us, regardless of how you play it, I don't think that there is a right way or a wrong way to play it, okay? It is just your way to play it and really it's just down to you, okay? But this is not where I'm going. Like I said, we're setting the tone. This is where I'm coming. The career life cycle. I created this and I, I just gave it this name and I hope it helps you. Regardless of if you go through five industries or five companies or your career is colorful or is not, you know, you find that if you were to dissect your career, there are two parts. In one part, you are a sower. In the second part, it is the season of harvest. But both parts are so interdependent that it is critical to play each part well. And timekeeper, yeah, you help me with my timing, okay? In one part, you are a taker. This is something a lot of people don't like especially in the younger phase, especially in this millennial generation. But I have to speak the truth. You are a taker. In the second half, you are a giver. And I'm making this clear distinction and you will understand why. What are some of the features that you have to be mindful of? Um, I mean, you know, early in our career, we're always thinking, oh, I want to work in Shell. You know, we have these high falutin dreams. We see all these things. Look, one of the things I've learned, when you just get out of school, what is critical is to get on the career ladder. So if you're here and you're struggling, what is most critical at the beginning of your career is not how much you're getting paid. Because like I said, you're a taker. That salary is not the currency. You didn't have that money before you got that job. So if you were surviving then, you can survive now. Because this phase of your career is going to determine the kind of harvest that you come out with much later. So you are a sower. It's not time to reap. Some people reap prematurely, try to reap prematurely. And I'll talk a bit about that in my next slide. And that in itself is a killer. Get on the career ladder. That is just step one. There's, there's no other way to say it. It's a job, take it. It's not what you like, I hear you. But you know, once you get on the career ladder, navigating industry, navigating company, navigating departments, it's now well within your hands to do. But if you don't get on the ladder, 
you will not have the opportunity to then navigate your way into what you truly desire. That is step one. We often also think in this phase that we know ourselves, no, sir. Yes, I know what you studied. It's not you. And anyway, we have all seen that. I mean, doctors work in banks. Um, I mean, people just work anywhere right now. In the process of your career, you're going to have to let yourself discover yourself. Don't lock yourself in a cage. Don't think you know enough. Trust me, you're going to, I mean, it's almost like marriage. You're going to be growing and you're going to be finding yourself. So in this phase, just take it that I am a generalist. Bukumi, Bukumi mentioned something. Anything they say, do they, ah, no, that's not what I studied. No, sir. The answer is yes. I'm going to give you my shots. Remember, you are a sower and you are a taker. And what you are taking is you are taking experience, you are taking learning, you are getting things that are not just money. So in your mind, money should be nearly the last consideration. So self-discovery is a great feature in this half of your career. Skills. Hmm. Learning the hard skills, the technical skills, knowing how to get things done. What does it take to produce results? Not just to talk results, but to deliver results. That's what you learn here. You are a taker. You are a sower. The quality of what you sow will determine what you reap. And recall, look at this, it's a bell curve. So you are building these things to the point when you then peak. Now, everybody's peak is different, but we will get to that. Then there is the qualification myth, as I call it. Degrees versus certification. And I did it, I mean, I will admit I did it the wrong way because I didn't know better. So I did my MBA before I started going to do all my certification exams. If you are in the process of doing that, I would recommend stop right now. Because like I said, being able to deliver on the job is critical, learning the hard skills. And when you do those certification exams, as you guys are doing, a lot of you are on it, you will find that a lot of the things you are learning are immediately or almost immediately applicable to the day-to-day -day work. An MBA is a more strategic um, 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 degree. And then where you get it from truly matters. The quality of the MBA that you get then counts. I know in our parents' generation, because not a lot of people were schooled, if you got a degree, I mean, it gave you leverage. Right now, the degrees are for practical leverage. You don't get leverage from those degrees like that anymore. A lot of people cut their careers short and travel abroad and say, I am going back to school. If you look closely and you put your ears to the ground, you will find that a lot of them come back and struggle to get back into work. Oh yeah, that's very true. And you know, I, I would like for people to engage me as I'm talking about these things. Do you know people? Do you know people who have, oh, I'm going to do my masters and they left. And when they came back, they spent time trying to find a job. If I, most of them who got a job, I will tell you they got a job because their reputations prior to going they had established themselves as excellent people, so their bosses either took them back or created an avenue for them to get work. So I will place in this 
aspect, certification well over degree. Because people are looking for people who can deliver on the job, not people who have certificates. Thank you for, for being that honest. I mean, someone here says in the chat room, this happened to me, very true. So if, I mean, I know that the reason some of us do it is selfish. And we say, oh, you know, my father is willing to pay for it now. Let me go and do it. And I dare say this is one of the things that I did right. I refused. I said, no, I was in the early stages of my career and I wasn't going to go. So the qualification myth, please be mindful of it because I find a lot of people are disrupting their careers as a result. Then, you know, if you do these things right and you have to see the bottom panel, regardless of your stage in your career, one of the things that will keep propelling you, as some of them have mentioned here, these five things, they will be a constant, whether you're in the first half or you're in the second half. Grit, discipline, being deliberate, your attitude must always be tops and you must be someone who can deliver on the goods, not just talk, talk is cheap. It doesn't matter where you, whether you're in a board role, senior management, you are at the bottom of the ladder. Greek, discipline, being deliberate, having a great attitude and being able to always deliver on results must be a constant feature in the course of your career. They propel you. That is the va, -va -voom. That is what carries everything else that you have layered on it. There is no movement without these five things. If you like get all the degrees, get all the certifications, you have a ridiculous attitude, you will not move. It's that simple. So while you're even trying to get on the career ladder, great. Some of us will look for jobs like is, 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 I mean, looking for a job is a job in itself. When I was looking for a job several years ago, you should have seen me every morning, I'll dress up and go to the island. We lived on the mainland. It's a job and you take it seriously. You don't sleep and wake up whenever you like and then decide, oh, I have energy today to look for a job. Sir, you're a joker. So you have to start to apply these things to even get on the job ladder. It has to be your lifestyle. Now let's flip to the giver. I want to be interacting, so <laughs> ridiculous attitude. Okay. Uh, Clem say you should send in your questions, though. That's the juicy part. Hmm? Uh, maybe Inka didn't tell you people. Me, I'm just, I, I will tell you. So don't be offended. You ask a question and I give you the answer. Wrong. <laughs> Indeed, don't worry. You can go on our apologize later. <laughs> okay. So on this in the second half of your career, you are a giver. And that is the season of harvest. But everything you will achieve in the second half will be determined by the foundation you laid in the first half. Some of us are here, we are joking, and we think it is by knowing uncle and auntie. Uncle and auntie can only take you so far. When you then cross, then you will find that at top management, some people's careers, some people's careers tank. You see the bell curve. Some people coast. Some people fly. Case in point, Mrs. Awoshika. Where is she? This is someone who had built a successful company, the chair center, everything. And it is in that phase that she really entered the corporate world and she is taking off. Some of our parents will see that, I mean, 
they just went into oblivion. They went down, they now went into, they call it uh, retirement. Is that what you people call it? And because me, I'm one of the people, I'm, I'm planning never to retire for your information. So I don't have that, uh, a pensioner. I will never be a pensioner. I'm going to keep giving, giving of myself till I die. That's my thing. You define for yourself. And you know, there's nothing wrong with say, I want to rest. I want to be like Mrs. Awoshika and greater. I don't want to rest. I want to be like uh, uh, um, this architect, what's her name? Um, Adenowo. I don't want to rest. I want to keep giving till I die in service to my master. What will then come into play? What will do you in that second half? Skills, your first half. You're going to have to be able to manage top management, manage the politics, manage the people, manage the environment, manage the culture, manage, I mean, your soft skills will be a major feature. How you speak, when you speak, when to know that silence is golden. How to listen, to hear what people are not saying. Experience and leadership will be critical. The depth of your experience, your versatility, how the kind of exposure that you've gotten, what you have accomplished and how people can leverage it. Remember I said you're a giver. It is how organizations can leverage you to impact their profit, profitability, impact their people, impact themselves. You are a giver and that is the season of harvest. It is in this second half of the season that you begin to call your pay. Because of what you bring, because of what you have capacity to give, you start to say, look, if I'm coming over, I want a sign-on bonus. If I'm coming over, you know what? You gotta put 100 million on the table. You may not know it, but people are getting those things. I know someone who was leaving my organization because a major uh, telco wanted them at the point in time. And they had stopped this person for so long. Person respected my MD so much, loved working with my MD. and went to my MD to talk to him about it. And he said, look, the offer that they're giving you is too good to be true, but I'm not gonna release you. I'm going to release you only on the grounds that they say that Tell them that what I want from them is they got to give you a sign-on bonus and this is how much I want. They put $100,000 on the table, I let you go. Yeah, so. But everything, how people come after you, how, they, how much you are sought after is dependent on this aspect of your career that you are currently playing with. Be careful. Be very, very careful. Those small, small deals you want to do. Sharp boy, let's quickly do something. Let's quickly, quickly make small money. Quick, sharply, sharply. Those things will determine the quality and the outcome of your harvest in its season. So you have to be careful. I we're learning something. And I hope somebody is is yes. making up their mind so very very powerful wow powerful. very powerful go ahead so this second half of your career is when you <laughs> then become a specialist you know enough of yourself you know your interests you know your strengths you know what you love and then you narrow and then people come to you for you know what this is what she's great at it's not time to narrow. Right now, learn everything. Someone once said to me, oh, my boss said we are weak in the area of financial analysis. She's in risk management, but that part does not interest them. I said, you know what? You don't have to like it to do it. It may not interest you. Your boss has gone ahead of you. He knows what is, what is critical input. 
for your future. You don't have to always like what you are learning. You don't always have to like the department that you're in, but it's a skill <laughs> that you must have. It's that simple. So those of you that they post and you resist and you fight, stop it. You are a sower. It's not the season to reap. The second half is your season to reap. This is what it takes. How you fly is up to how much you have invested in yourself by yourself in this first half. And your investment is not just in the book that you're reading. It's in the quality of your skill. There are hands on the job. It is how much of yourself you know. It is about discipline. It is how you've trained yourself, your attitude in being able to deliver results. It is the capacity for grit, which is just sheer perseverance. So we go to well, our penultimate slide. So I've just raised here some critical questions. Having set the tone in that slide, there are some critical questions that we need to look at. Okay, I'm sorry, Clem, I have five minutes, I hear you. Okay, well, that five minutes has even gone, Seth. <laughs> Please, I'm sorry. Okay, so critical questions will be the question of never taking off. Why are you not taking off? You have to answer that question. Why are you not taking off? You've gotten on the career ladder, but you're not moving. Go and look in that diagram and answer that question. Why am I not taking off? Number two, identify your weakness and decide. Why did I crash? Because if you're going to come back, you have to find exactly where you crashed and correct it and connect back. Reconnect. The question of zero or low momentum. Some of us are just stuck. Why am I stuck? I, I mean, I hope when people ask questions that I will address these things, but you know, we need to shut down. The idea of rebooting what does it take to reboot and get your momentum you can't just stay where you are you know i hate people who blame other people for everything it is you how do i regain momentum some people lose momentum and end up crashing how do i avoid the crash how do i regain momentum the question of your values and your life goals you know how you progress, usually you progress at a cost. Truly your values and your life goals will determine what you're willing to pay, what sacrifice you're willing to make for um, um, this, this um, um, progress that you want to make. And there's nothing wrong with you saying, you know what, I'm not willing to go beyond this because um, 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 I'm not willing to go beyond this because the cost is too expensive relative to my personal goals for my life. Everything is no money. A lot of people ask me why I've stayed so long in Guarantee Trust. My first answer is that organization aligns very well with my values. Then the question of peer pressure. You know, it's not in all the jumping that you are necessarily successful. I've stayed in Guarantee Trust. I've made it to nearly the top, okay? But you know, I know a lot of people make a lot of career moves because eh, people are moving, you know, people are moving. What have I missed? People are actually moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't say it out and then you move. Misalign yourself with your personal objectives. You gotta be careful with that. And then a very wise man that I know once said, you can cash your premium, your career premium, you cash it once, right? So you need to ask yourself, when can I cash out of my career premium? Don't cash out too late, don't cash out too early. There's a point in your career that when you exit, you fly. 
the leap is amazing. I don't, I don't recommend that people live for tiny, tiny, you know, I don't know, I mean, you're moving because they want to add 50K to your salary, come on. Have you learned enough? And your premium will always be when the organization believes that what they have to give you is so much less than what you have to give them. I heard someone use this analogy that, do you know if Tony Elumelu announced that he was going to Unity Bank as MD? You know that suddenly their share price will move from one naira eh, to 15 naira before the close of that day. So the value that Etoni Elumelu brings to that organization is well beyond whatever it is that they can give him. So when people are offering you 100K, that's what you're worth. That's your extra value to them. But when they put a sign-on bonus on the table, to say, you know what, uh, um, um, we're going to do um, um, 100 million on the table for starters, and then you're gonna sign a contract to stay with us for three years, and then these are the pegs that are, those are the pegs. The house in Ikoi, that, that, that is the premium that you command. And you, 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 you cashed out in senior management in an only, another organization to go there, we'll clap for you. And then finally, in closing, you know, I'm reading a book right now titled Grit by Angela Duckworth. And this is something she said that really has struck a chord with me. She's speaking about something that I've always believed in. Okay. And that is truly uh, talent is overrated. And there's another book by that title, which my MD, Mr. Shagwa Agbaje, recommends that everybody reads. Angela says our potential is one thing, what we do with it is quite another. You need to answer that question. What are you doing with the potential that is inside you? It's not about, am I intelligent and I'm not intelligent? That's not what it's about. It's about what you're willing to give for what you want to get. So thank you very much, everyone. Wow, thank you so much. I'm, I'm, even, I'm speechless. Sincerely, I didn't want to send that um, time check because no, that's the, 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 the session has been very, very, very interesting, very deep, you know, and frankly, I'm sure I'm speak, I speak for a number of people here. They would want the session to continue, you know, but I think with the questions we're going to, we're going to tackle, I'm sure we're going to get further insight. Thank you so much. Um, you did great mm -hmm. justice to that. Um, so we're going to delve right into the questions. Quickly, I want to say, if you have questions, please bring your questions. We have a ton right. of questions already. So we have a ton of questions already. So we're just going to go straight into it. I'm going to start from the top. However, you know, there are some questions that are very similar. I'll try and, you know, be very, very clinical, yeah. you know, putting it together. So we don't have to go back to some of the things we've addressed. Okay. Thank you so much once again. Um, the first question we have here, um, I believe, the first question here is, what do you advise for someone who wants to move to another unit, but because of what people are saying about that unit, he is scared? <laughs> well, I, I mean, really, okay. So I'll tell you one of the things with me in the course of my career. I don't let anybody define bosses to me. Okay, the fact that someone else has had that experience with an boss doesn't mean that that should be my own experience. So, um, yeah, people have things that they've said about somebody, and I'm going to determine that my own experience will be different, and I will know people for myself. So, if it's an experience that I want to have, remember, I am a sower. It is my season of taking, and I need that experience. What I do in the first half of my season is going to affect the next half. Why will I let someone else's opinion impact that area of my life and then rob my future? No. I will take the plunge. I will learn the people or the boss for myself. I will be determined to make the sacrifice. And I will go there. I will learn that boss. I will not let anybody get into my head. And I'll be determined to walk 
extremely to get that boss to love me to give them and to deliver everything that they want no, nobody likes a nobody hates a good staff i'll tell you okay thank you very much um, you so got I think, <laughs> all right thank you i'll just go straight to the next question and try to um bump the questions together. So there, um, there are a few ones around certification. Somebody wants clarification. Are you? Do you mean that um, it's better to go for certification? Um, just clarification around when to go for certification. Which one should one go for first? You know, certification before degree. That's clarification. And maybe you so can I'm also like... go on. Okay. So maybe with that, we want to look at also how do you learn in an organization that doesn't provide that avenue. So in spite of, you know, you, you've made a choice around certification and degree, but the organization probably doesn't provide that avenue. How do you learn in spite of that? How do you build yourself? Okay, so first and foremost, uh, certification after your first degree, right? I know a lot of people want to quickly go off to their master's. You don't have value at the point in time, and I'm hoping some people will back me up. Um, there's no real value in that. But with your certifications, you can start almost immediately. I would typically say maybe you wait in your first year um, in that organization to settle in and then start to do your certification exams in whatever area that interests you, right? Now, the only um, exception that I typically make when it comes to a second degree is where you want to do a drastic change in career, right? So someone studied philosophy and wants to go into IT, right? They can go do a second degree. I studied biochemistry. I want to be a doctor. I, I want to go to medical school. So I make those exceptions when there is a drastic change that you want to make. But otherwise, I say stay the course, do your certifications. Now, your organization doesn't encourage um, um, certifications, I hear, I hear someone say, um, they don't encourage certifications. I don't even understand what that means. When I was doing my ACCA, and by the way, I, I'm not an accountant, that was not my first degree. I was barely sleeping three hours. I mean, the sacrifice is up to you. You make those sacrifices if you want something. Whose life is it going to affect in the future is yours. So what this entitlement that they have to give me time, they have to give me, nobody owes you anything. Get that thing out of your head. Nobody freaking owes you anything. I'm sorry, but it's just the, the reality. So if what it takes is to burn the midnight candle, you, you, you knuckle down and you get it done. Look, when I was doing those certifications, I'll tell my husband, I look, oh, see, I don't have life again, no. So you see, all of you, you'll be doing whatever you're doing. Don't invite me, family party. I don't attend those things. You can't eat your cake and have it, my dear. So what it takes is what it takes. Why should the organization give you anything special? Considering that when you now get that same certification, you now use it to get out and get a job elsewhere and not care what they think. So why should they owe you? Oga, you want the certification? Knuckle down. If you don't have to sleep, you don't have to sleep. It's not your lifetime. No vex, so you asked for okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, if, if I may just add. Wow. I don't know why I'm hearing myself. I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. So if I may just add, in the, in the, yeah, it's very blunt like that. Too. So that's it. But if I may just add, um, I, I have a personal experience with respect to education. Um, for example, like I said, I, I didn't need CIPM to do my work and, and to progress in my career, but I went to get it. And, and I have no regrets about it. The problem is that a lot of people are looking for people, organizations that will pay for, until they pay for training programs for them. In fact, some people will go for mm -hmm. a training program and say, come and bring this, I go, come, we are giving me refunds. If I'm using the knowledge to, to work for you. If you have that mindset, then you will impede your own personal development because you will always be looking for what you will try to get back in return, not what you are putting in yourself. I like what she said about SOA. And I just wanted to say, I'm not reacting what Indidi said about um, what people's personal experience. People speak about their personal experience about people because it's their personal experience. 
So go and make create your own personal experience of that person. Why are you Maybe. defining your personal yeah. experience based on the parallel that someone has created? I work with a boss. Exactly. It's, it's a very interesting boss to work with. In fact, some people have had to leave the organization at times because they felt they struggled to work with her. But I told myself, as long as I'm here, I will add value to her. She, we are so close on a personal ground there. Eh? She calls my mom. My mom does stuff for her. And I've been in an organization. We did a, she did a presentation at an event recently and it was successful. She sent me a mail saying, thank you. When you make the, that person shine, forget about it. The person might be rude, it might be bad to other people, but you, eh, forget it. You have your personal experience. That's my thoughts, additional thoughts. Thank you, Indigo. Maybe me, I'm not the ash one, so. <laughs> no, I want it to enter you people's body. I'm not for pampering people. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You so can you apologize for me. Um, okay. Thank you very much. I still I'm still going to go ahead with the questions. Um, there are questions here around timing. So do you put a time to that sewing? And do, is it one year, two years? Is there a timing to it? And how do you manage? Um, a career transition. So you're moving from one, you're converting from one area to another. How do you manage that? You know, so that's really it. Thank okay, you. Okay, so um, when it comes to putting, okay, let me tell you, the truth is that I have played my career by the ear, really. Um, my Mostly my, my career has been defined by um, what uh, Ambukumi spoke to this what I seek for in my life as an individual. So my values are of critical importance to me. Um, um, so um, it, it has directed how I have played. As a person, I get bored easily. I love a good challenge. I don't see impossibility. You know, okay. I, I don't, you can't tell me that there's no solution to something. I don't listen to those things. So you, you just have to, Challenging. We'll take it tomorrow. Yeah, that's okay? one of the things that I have done okay. brilliantly. We'll take you know, this. I've worked everywhere. I've done different things. I've started new businesses. I've gone to re revitalize old businesses. I've done all sorts. And that's why I'm still excited working in that organization. Okay, so I've kind of played my career by, um, I I'm not big on ego. Right, so ego has never been a factor for me. I just want to love my life. I want to enjoy, truly, I'll be honest with you. If you ask me, what do I want from life? I want to make impact, right? So I'm in a different season right now and I know it takes me somewhere. Let's see where it takes me. I have played my career by the ear. I've never been, in five years, I must be here. In two years, I must be here. Because then again, I'm a born again Christian. Right. So even before I make every any move, it's important to me that because not, not every move makes you stronger. You make some moves and they totally delete you. So it's always important for me to mm. understand the leading of the spirit, to hear what God is saying about a matter. So I don't jump around, everybody's jumping. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are jumping. I'm too, I'll start jumping. No, I, I want to be settled that what is God saying about this matter? And if he says wait, wait is what it is. I've gotten burnt several times by not listening to the leading of the spirit. And as much as possible, I want to stay away from it. I'm a spirit first. I'm not my body. Thank you very much. Um, so for this question is for Bukumi, actually. Um, Sorry, Claire, can I quickly address? Someone sent a private question and um, he or she said, is it advisable to switch careers because of children? Um, you might want to color that question because I'm not sure I totally understand it. So you might want to give clarity. So go on, Clem. Then I will take it on. on Thank you very much. Um, maybe with that question on children, I think you also, if you can also take, at the time you're taking it, um, talk about age because there are questions around what age. I want to move to HR about the age. I'm not at the right age. Okay, thank you. So this question is for Bukumi actually. So the question is, do you focus in planning your career do you focus on passion or trend? So there's a trend, you know, there's a, you know, 
tech, everybody's tech, that sort of thing. Do you focus on trend or you focus on your passion? Thank you. Okay, sorry, I was muted. Yeah. Um, they actually, uh, you know, we talked about you, you, you. When I was, um, I used to work in an ad agency from years ago. When I was first career, and one of the let me tell you one of the secrets of a successful ads put you in the mix. So now, a successful ad will want to make the audience see themselves as the target, the only target of, of that ad. So they go and target you as an individual. So the answer that I will take to you is this, what drives you? Now, if you are if you are driven by trends, then it will be like what the Bible says, you are carried away with every window of job. You have to ask yourself, because the truth is now, in my organization, and it happened in my organization, there was a time that it wasn't about trend. Okay, it was even a trend. A lot of people were leaving. Um, some of the other competitors tried targeting. Ah, my computer is there. <laughs> some of them started targeting. You know, they were they wanted to build an aspect of their business that we were very strong in. And some of them would start targeting my team members. I lost about sixteen members at some point within a very short period of time. And I asked them, I said, "Okay, tell me what I want to do." And I told myself, I said, "They have their races to run." What drives you? And, and this one, we will talk about the Holy Spirit too. Did you really talk about it? You need to find out what God is leading you to do that time. If you are driven by trend, then you will be driven. Trend will always change. Trend changes. They will release iPhone 12. If you have not, you bought iPhone 12. You have not even finished checking the features, the manual. They say they want to leave iPhone 13. Okay, what's going on here? What's happening right now? Something was happening right now. So really, you need to ask yourself, the question exactly I want for myself. What is God leading now? What do I want? Your desire in line with God's will. In line, so I then ask myself, how do I start? The time that one of the um, big four friends came to me and gave me an offer, I said no. They went and rewrote the letter. They brought another letter. I said no. They went and they changed the letter three times. Now, when you got to that point, I saw that ah, this thing is about money now. My wife called me and said, no, you, are, you are being moved by something else. And I sat down and I evaluated it, and I knew that I, it wasn't the right time. I may have shortchanged certain things that I'm doing right now. May have become deleted, if you talk about it, by truncating and aborting my career. And then you now start struggling. Some people have to start all over again because they decided to cut short a period of sewing, uh, and then they started trying to read. And then they became they became uh, they became they became uh, a, a dot in history. So please, my advice to the person is, uh, my son is shouting, evaluate where you are right now. Find out what God is leading you to do. Find out what drives you. Find out what inspires you. But everything has to be driven by a desire to make impact, add value, mm. inspire people. You have to be adding value. If you are not appreciating and adding value, then you start degrading and you become a nuisance to everybody around you. So that really should be the most important thing. I think I've talked a lot about it and I hope I address that person from some. Thank you. Hello, am I still here? Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so Didi, the question about, I think it's just to, for instance, let me just read it out. How do you get into the career path of your choice when you have no related experience and first, and where you're working is not what you see yourself doing in the future. It's really about, you don't have related experience and you want to, to get into a career path of your choice. The other bit is, how do you move from that point of, you know, sewing? It's still that, that question. I think a lot of people just need that clarity around how do you move from that point of sewing to the point of giving? And how do you draw the line between doing your personal thing and what, what really, what's the compelling um, force? What's that thing that compels you to, that can propel you into that place of giving? Yeah, I think that's really it. I'm trying to paraphrase. So what will propel you from that place of sowing to the place of giving? And 
how do you, you don't have experience in the field, how do you garner the experience that you need to pivot into a desired career path? Okay, so let me take the first, which is um, um, you want to change career paths. So it's always, you know, I said with the degrees, I make an exception, okay? You have to retrain. So you see a lot of people who study different things. They're acquiring IT skills, coding skills. So because of that, they are able to change industries. So you often have to retrain, okay? I studied biochemistry, I want to become a nurse. You have to actually actively retrain, okay? So you determine what are the skills, what skills are extremely sought after in that particular industry. Let me go and train for it. Sometimes after the training, you have to work somewhere for next to nothing. Remember what I said about what is critical is getting on the career ladder. You want to completely make a drastic change into a different career. So you might want to get on, on the career ladder, right? So you, you retrain, you can work for next to nothing. You can sometimes have to go and do an a, a apprenticeship with someone who is paying you nothing, just to develop yourself, to be able to go into that new industry. So sometimes that's what it takes. Um, moving from sewing to reaping. Um, um, ah. Olu, Olu, I like this thing you are telling me. Will money come out of it? <laughs> Olu says he likes the, the career life cycle model. Yes, it's my copyright. Um, okay, so this is it, right? Um, um, moving from sowing to reaping. You know, if you sow well, it, it's, it's kind of natural, right? Um, and everything that I've shown you is really how you transit. Hard skills, soft skills, right? Um, showing leadership, being able to work with teams, and things like that. That's kind of how you transit. You start gradually, you know, the, the hard skills begin to become less important and the soft skills become more important. You start to show leadership. That's how you start to cross over. So if you look at uh, um, propelling yourself, you know, if you, if you sow seeds, um, um, I want to plant a, I want to get purple, you are not the one that determines, is it not when Popo is showing on the tree that you start to pluck it and then start to eat Popo? If Popo is not showing on the tree, there's nothing to harvest. So really that's what it is. It is kind of natural. It's not something that if you've done the sowing properly, you will find that you're transiting. A lot of people, when they try to force it, that is part of what causes a crash. And Bukumi spoke about that. He said, when you are trying to force a harvest, when it's not due. So the quality of how you sow and what you sow is what will determine how quickly the season for reaping comes. If you're not ready and you go and take an executive director role in another company, you're gonna crash and burn because you're not ready for it. So it's kind of natural. Um, the, the person that spoke about family, should I leave a nine to five because um, I have children or something like that? See, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a mother, right? Right now, my kids are, and, and people will say, <laughs> you guys are already laughing. Uh, see, uh, my kids are 19, 17, and the 19 year old will soon be 20. Um, and I have a six year old daughter. She'll be seven in September. Yes, how did that happen? Listen, eh? your children have their life. You as a parent, you need to have a life. What is happening to a lot of women? My, my sister-in-law once asked me that question about, oh, you know, she got a job, but it means she has to move to Akure. This is something she's always wanted. Your problem is you're not willing to get uncomfortable. And if you're gonna change, it's gonna come with discomfort. So the structure that you're building 
around your children and around your life is what will make the difference. Some of us are working, but we are living like we're students. You need to consistently evaluate that structure and change it. So your kids are small. People tell you, oh, you know, ah, you cannot have two maids. If you need two maids, you need two maids. Say, I can't afford it. No, you can. Just stop buying a Sherby. If you stop buying a Sherby, you will pay for the maid. You need to make sacrifices. But by all means, my husband will say the world that you are able to see as a mother, it is the world that your children will see. If you aspire high, your children will go higher than you. If you want to stop your children, stop yourself. It's that simple. So you are entitled to a life, regardless of whether you have kids or not. And who you marry is a major career decision. My husband is the best of the best of the best of the best. I'm in Port Harcourt. When I moved here, my daughter was barely two. She's fine. My husband has to be the greatest man that ever lived. Oh. Oh, the I'm, truth I'm, not, I'm just telling you guys the truth. I've lived this thing so I can tell you. Stop holding yourself back. If you are someone, if your premium is to be a family person, by all means, be a family person. There's nothing wrong with it. But you want to fly with your career, you're a career person. You can wait till later if you like. Nancy Pelosi did it. Okay? It's all up to you. <laughs> okay. Wow. You know, I love you in class, so I'm here until, until whenever you're ready to release me. You're welcome, dear. Okay. Wow. Thank you very much. I want just I just got one um, something I've been hearing. <laughs> Who you marry is a major career decision. Thank you very much. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So um, I think we are going to wrap up very soon. In the next, um, we're going to wrap up very soon. But there are just a few more questions. Just a few more. And I don't think it, it aligns with some of the things we have talked about in the past. Um, okay, Bukumi, this question is for you. And the lady says, my career is just starting. I resumed at a multinational company in December and another multinational company wants to employ me. Will you advise me to move from my current multinational company to another multinational company? She just moved and she has just spent one year. Do you advise her? Is it advisable to move? She has just spent one month, actually. And is it reasonable or should she just forfeit and continue where she is currently? Okay, so this, this question is interesting. It is actually easy. And she's the only one that can answer that question. Because the only thing that is com it's, uh, common to both companies, multinationals. So the question is, has she shown enough where she has, where she is? Has she learned, um, has she gotten the skills that she actually desired to get where she is right now? What is she looking for that other, other multinational companies offering her that she won't be able to get where she is right now? And you know, the danger with this now is because she just started her career, so she just started off. So the question is, does she want to start and then start jumping from one place to another place without actually having a stable point in her career at this point. Now, because I don't have information around what the other multinational company does, what she's currently doing right now, what are her own personal visions, what are her own personal goals, what is she trying to achieve? I may not be able to actually upgrade the answer that. But she needs to think about this. What is she trying to achieve for herself? Now, there are times that there's, there was a time that one of my team members got an offer and, and you know, we wanted to move to one of the big four. Yeka is here again. And I sat him down and asked him, Now, you've joined us. Are you at, do you think you're at a level where if you move, you will evaluate the things that you've learned and you think that you've actually learned enough? 
to get into the next level. There are some of my teenagers that they took and, you know, they give them double rules. And, you know, till now, you may not be able to evaluate what they have actually been able to achieve substantially. Some of them may have done great stuff. But I would advise them, because you may need to actually have direct interaction to understand the context, that perhaps take out time, settle you in first. You can't just have started in a few months and then you see another offer you are jumping into. Except you find that the offer that you have taken is completely wrong for you. Maybe you go into the organization and you find out that the culture of the organization is at variance with your values. It's a place that you cannot even cope with. Culture, I'm talking about the organizational culture. And if it flows from the top, that means it's something that the tone at the top has impacted about the culture. Then you can take advantage of that new opportunity. Perhaps it's even God that is opening that one and say, you have made a mistake, oh, you better retrace yourself. But if those issues are not in place, you've gotten an offer, settle down. You're just starting off in your career. Listen, observe, learn, gain. And, and there's a question that someone asked about as skills, stuff, uh, soft skills. Gain technical competence where you are right now before you then start jumping into the unknown. Because the truth is you might think the grass is green at the other side, but the grass is green this is the cliche because somebody else is watching it. So let me, let me stop at that point. Um, perhaps Didi might want to add a few words to that, even though she wasn't the person that I get to her. Uh, um, what I actually wanted to talk about is I, I see a few people are talking about age, who is too late. Look, I, I don't believe in that concept that anything is ever too late. Joe Biden is the president of America at what age, 78? The oldest ever elected president. You know, stop, stop. Um, why do you say something is too late? You say something is too late simply because um, that's what society says. Who, who is placing those boundaries? Who is saying what is early and what is late? Who says those things? You know, you can make impact whenever. There might just be a particular aspect of that field you want to focus on. There could be an aspect of it that aligns with an experience that you've had most of your life. And you want to develop that area. You know, you, you want to retrain. You probably have the resources. You can't enter into an organization, but you want to start your own organization and be able to serve that industry in one way or the other and get younger people to work for you. There are so many ways to do it, you know. And you know, you, you gotta lose the shame. There is this perceived shame, I'm too old. Uh, nobody's going to stop me. Me, I will never become a pensioner. So all of us will be in this market, we will drag it to nothing. So, <laughs> you know, I never want to stop. This is what will give me joy. I want to make impact, make impact till God calls me home. That is what I want in my life. So, you know, stop this, um, I'm too old. And, and that is what has held you back for the four or five years. And I'm prophesying here, whoever that is for is for you. The last four or five years, that is what has held you back because you've consistently said to yourself that you are too old for this. Lose those shackles and move. Yeah, amen, the prophecy. Sorry, someone sent me a question directly, and I think I should answer it because it's, um, let's just say it works in a bit more firm. Um, everybody hear me? Let me just quickly answer it. Yeah, we can hear you. Good evening, sir. My, oh, the thing has run. Okay, I think I got the point. He said his question is that um, he works in a big four firm and it's a fast paced environment, and it's almost as if the firm is taking over his life, and um, he's at it's a fast way around me and just in that season where I am just tired. Wow. Now, so I mean, I've been a big for firm for 11 years plus now. And what I want to start with is to say, the feeling you have is not an isolated feeling. You are not, you are not alone. <laughs> if I, yesterday I was still talking to my wife, we just revelating things. There was a time that I just felt like, Training the tower, the Inca would know how this works. But the truth is, what you ask yourself is first. And I'll be as practical as possible because the, the gentleman is, says the big of her. You need to find out what resources are available to help make the work easier for you. 
what resources? Now, the problem that a lot of people face at work is that they think that the problems that they are going through cannot be solved. So they, in their mind, they have already said, everybody will, everybody will say they are busy now. But have you reached out? So, they, so you already assume that everybody is busy. So they give you work. You can pass this work. Okay. You can, another you can pass this work to you. Yes, I'm on top of it. Another person buys this work. Yes, I'm on top of it. You are afraid to say no. You are afraid to say, I have things I'm working on. And it's something we face. A lot of people in the big four firms, you think that if you say no, it means that you are, you are lazy. They will say that you don't want to work. No. If you are someone that is, has, has a reputation for adding value, and you go to your manager and say, this is not working, they will make way for you because they know that if you go to competition, they are losing value. Don't be mm. afraid. What is important is that you have already developed premium. You have already sold seeds. You have already accumulated value in that organization. And, and, it, and the problem is that many, many people don't even understand the value that they have put in the organizations that they work in. So they think that if they push back, the organization will say, I just come and be going. No, the organization understands your value. And oftentimes, as I in the big four fans, people sit down thinking that nothing will change. But if you don't hold, so what did I do when I was going through those challenges? I had, if I had to go and read books, I started pushing back because I was Mr. Nice Guy. Everybody comes. You see, you know me, I'm not as harsh as uh, in the dinner, this you know. But I found out that I found out that I was getting swamped. I was struggling with the work and I could not, I started then failing in my responsibility. So I speak to you and I, because I've been there. It's like you have so much on your hands. Don't be afraid to have a sit down with your, with your boss. Don't be afraid to have it. You can even go straight to your partner. Don't be afraid. Don't think nobody, anybody's going to recognize you. You have choices. Many a times people think that they don't have choices in their life. So the only singular choice that they see in front of them is the one they focus on. And they think that if they lose it, that's the end of the world. Go and have those difficult conversations with your partner. Have it with your, don't jump your money. Have it with your money first. Have it with your in charge. And then as you, as you have it, what will help going forward is, as you think about those issues, start thinking about possible solutions that can be implemented in the team to make the work better for everybody. And you might be the one that will, that will create that change. That will, that everybody say, hey, everybody has even waiting for you. Thank you so much for pushing back. I've been thinking about it, but I'm afraid to talk. So please, don't be afraid to have those difficult conversations. If you are actually someone that is bringing value to the table, they won't push you off. They will listen to you and they will make the necessary adjustments that will make the work easier for everybody in the team. But if you want to have a conversation with me frequently, please feel free to. Uh, at this way, we can relate on that in there. But I hope that the views I share can help you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you very much. OK, so I think we should just take one last question around managing family. That's one angle. You know, because Didi, you mentioned your, your choice of a partner is a critical career decision. So I think we should just talk about managing family that bit, you know, then we, we can end this session. And maybe subsequently, if we have um, members, if you have questions, we can always pass it on to our facilitators, you know, even after this session, so that we can have um, further engagement. But it's important we, we sort of round off this session. But I, I think we should touch on family. How do you manage the family bit, your spouse bit, marriage, and all of that? Okay, um, really, I, I often get asked this question, and I think I already touched on it. You know, a lot of times, um, and someone asked that question, how do I manage? Um, um, I mean, if you're the one that asked the question, please bring it up again so that she can pick it. Um, okay, over the years, how have you managed the tension between you and your spouse, even with your distance apart? So everything is down to changing structure and changing habits. It really, really starts with you. So you have to look at what needs to work differently, right? Um, so I'll, I'll give you some practical examples. Um, so when it, when it comes to the home, when I first started, 
um, when I was in Abuja, I mean, you know, I would Saturdays, I would wake up in the morning, go to the market, buy, 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 come back. And those were the days of no washing machine at the point in time. Um, we will buy heaven and earth. I will come back. I'll make two pots of soup. So I know how to cook. Mm? I'll make a pot of beans. I'll make a pot of stew. I'll make zobo for my family. We will bring our clothes. My maid will wash. If I don't have a keeper, me and my husband, we will put our heads together. I mean, I will just be spent at the end of the day, manage to sleep early in the morning, jump up again, go to church, spend a half of the day in church and try and have an afternoon snoo snooze on Sunday. I mean, really, is that life? And my kids were younger. So at some point I had to talk to myself that, I mean, if this is not madness, then what is? So I made friends with a woman in the market. I still remember her name, Auntie Eukarya. So I, I will call her. Auntie UK, I beg, will, I will tell her my list. That was the days of Nokia 3310. She will write it down and when when she had gotten everything, the vegetable, let me cut it. This one, this how much I want. A goose, I want this, that, I want that, 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 that. And at the end of work, I'll probably get off a bit early or I'll find someone who will go in there and collect it from her and give her the cash. Then they say, oh, she will be cheating you. I said that extra 3,000 Naira she will collect from the money is, is the payment for my peace. Mm? It's not worth that sleep. So that way on Saturday, I bought time. I will get up and I will make the meals and still have enough time to be with my kids. So you need to look at the structure of your life today. As you move on through that uh, career life cycle, you will find that you must consistently change the base that you're running with change the structure that you're running with. So I attended a mentoring session with Mrs. Awoshika and I've gotten the opportunity to meet a lot of senior women. And I'm telling you, and there's no difference. So all of us were the same. We are grappling with the same stuff. I remember the former CEO of Pepsi, Nindra Modi, was that her name? Indra something. And you know, she was talking about how she was managing her children and how she managed her children was she was dependent on her secretary. So wherever she was in the world, the kids knew to call her secretary and whatever it was, she got, she got the information. She didn't stop her life. Remember, if you wanna stop your children, stop yourself. So really you have to keep tinkering with your structure. You must not neglect your home. So with my husband, I always make sure, I mean, I have a, a, a structure to ensure his clothes are washed. My husband, I'm the one who I shop for him. I do all the buying and everything. I have a structure for, I mean, and then you have to, you have to be a sensitive partner. You have to listen to what he's not saying. So me, typically, when my husband starts saying things like, hi, that's your bitter leaf soup, eh? They want me to enter the kitchen and use my hand to go and make the soup. I will enter the kitchen and make the soup. I haven't lost my skills to cook. Okay? So, you know, and your husband will understand you are in this together. If you have a marriage, please, and if you're a woman, and this happens a lot to women, you have to stay grounded. Someone once had an issue and she spoke to me privately and honestly about wanting to even break up her, her marriage. And I said, I, I, I warn you, this thing called a career is not a journey for one person. I can't tell you how many times I've gone home and I have cried and my husband has been the one who has encouraged me and said, ah, ah, Madam, you say you want to do career. This is what it takes. So sometimes then they are going to brutalize you. Pick up yourself, Madam, and move. You want this, we go for it. You need, I mean, who is the other person that you're ever going to be able to talk to in your life? Who will not carry your gist and go outside? If it's a close friend, just wait small. When you quarrel, you will hear your story. But with your husband, you are in it together. When God established marriage, he knew what he was doing. So focus on the things that are great about your spouse and stop bitching around over nothing. 
You know, it's that same, instead of you to focus on the 90% that is awesome about him, you want to focus on the 3% that you have not gotten and you want to destroy everything that you have. Except your life is threatened. Separation is not necessarily a better choice. So really, keep tinkering with the structure that you're working with. When you have young children, it can be tough. Before you know it, they are grown, right? My kids now, they drive, they do all sorts, and I send them. If my husband believes that we don't use them enough, why is somebody going when he can't? He, my friend, you get out, go and do that thing for your mom. Do you understand? You will come back to your season of honeymoon. I have a rule of thumb. I don't stay away from home for more than two weeks. Sometimes when I have to be here, my husband says, are you coming? I said, you know, really, this, that. He said, okay, I'll come. And my husband will come here and, and he will make the sacrifice. And you have to know it's a sacrifice. And he'll be here with me for one week. He'll be here for five days. If he can stay longer, he'll stay longer. Then he'll go home. So it's a partnership. And that partnership really does work. So your, your marriage doesn't need to take your career. And I have a lot of examples of women who have gone ahead of me. And they are like this with their husbands. Wow, thank you very much, um, NDD. Thank you. Sorry, very you can reach me on LinkedIn if you have some questions. Someone asked about that. Okay, go on, Yinka, I'm sorry. All right, thank you so much, NDD and Bukumi. We have, I mean, gone beyond our budget time of uh, one and a half hours, and we still have more questions pouring in, but we have to have a hard stop. <laughs> we have to we, we have to have a hard stop. So I'm going to take your um, final comments, final remarks um, now. But before I do that, I want to recognize um, Governor General Osi is on the call, and Osi has been on the call for a very long time. And my so leader, oh, I really want to thank you for joining this session. Osi, do you just want to say hello? And do you just want to say hello? They, they have to say hello. If not, we'll not end the call. <laughs> I set them up. Oh, see. Mr. Joshua, do you want to say hello? Whilst we wait for Osi. Okay, good evening, everyone. Hear me. Okay, what's he speaking? Let me. Okay, um, I, I won't I won't say much because I'm driving at the moment, so just enjoying the conversation. Thank you to Ndidi and Bukumi. Um, really, really great session. Well, well done, guys. And thank you, Yinka, for setting me up. <laughs> thank you. Governor General. Um, but, that's your bitter leaf soup. We need to meet in camera. Um, I'm also interested in uh, having yes. a taste. Don't let me come after you. No, you are going us. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Mr. Joshua. OK. Good evening, everyone. I've just been listening to the conversation. I actually, listening to it with my daughter, yeah? So, um, so I put up my video now. So, <laughs> uh, a lot of hard talk. Eh? So, you know, uh, a lot of hard talk from Bukumi and uh, Didi. And I learned a lot from the sessions, you know. We learn every day. I learned a lot from the session. Too. Um, I was reading through the comments. Um, <laughs> a couple of people felt that it was very blunt, you know. But for me, I'll live with one word they spoke about. Versatility, versatility. But thank you, Bukumi, and very great session. And thank you, Nika, for organizing. And thank you, participants. Um, at a point in time, I saw almost 120, almost 130 people. So very great session. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Malan um, Joshua. Um, Bukumi, indeed, I don't know how um, we want to thank you. I've learned so much from your experience. Thank you for being practical. Thank you for being blunt. Um, uh, we don't. I mean, I share your. I share your your views. Um, I don't even think we need to. 
we, we need to apologize for anything anymore because these are hard truths that we need to face. Thank you for sharing your time. I, and I, I believe that um, we are taking so much value from you. And um, we, we are also going to, the only thing we can do is to make sure that we practicalize all these views that you have shared with us. If we have any more questions, we are going to reach out to you. So I'll take your uh, closing remarks now. Bukumi, do you want to go first, please? Let me respect myself and follow from accepted protocol. Didi, they say ladies first. <laughs> To be honest, I, I don't have much to say. Um, maybe my final word will be, um, really with career progression, you have to take responsibility. You can never blame anybody. If you wanna go somewhere, really you are the biggest obstacle to yourself. So um, shank all that blaming boss, blaming team members, blaming, really you always have a choice in any situation and get uncomfortable. People always ask me, you know, how do I change? If I want to change, I want to be different. I want to do things differently. Nobody, nobody desires to change or changes from a comfortable position. So get uncomfortable, take responsibility. And God bless you, just keep going. You, you will make it as long as you're determined and willing to put in the hard work. Okay. So I jump in straight away because of time. Um, someone has sent a question, but I responded. Please, please can reach out to us on LinkedIn. Uh, we can take a conversation forward. So I'll just end on this note because it's all about planning now. What is not quantified, and I responded to someone based on that, cannot be measured. If you are talking in vague terms, if you think in vague terms, then you really are not talking about real results. So you need to do the hard work don't forget to do the hard work of quantifying the things that you want to de you desire to achieve for yourself. And that will help you keep your eyes on the ball to be able to actually progress in your career. And um, I'll, I'll just leave on, on that. I'm sorry, one more thing, comfort zone. Beware of the comfort zone. The comfort zone is the most dangerous zone anybody can be. Because you can be short, it's like sitting on the fence when you are in the battle. People who sit on the fence, Haru can eat them from either side. So even friendly fire, we call it friendly fire in the military, can eat them. So please continue to challenge yourself. Don't be satisfied with the comfort zone. Keep her doing yourself. Celebrate your wins though. But after you have celebrated your wins, look for look for more wins. You know, thank you so much. God bless you. All right, thank you very much. And thank you, Work and Study Group, for joining the session. I believe that this has been useful for all of us. And um, like we said before, please take advantage of the relationships that we are forming in the community group. I, I mean, I don't know where else we could have gotten so much value in short a short time. Thank you so much, everyone, and bye for now. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Clementina. Bye-bye, ma. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so you. much. The session was quite exciting. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the session. Bye, Rika. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Didi, my, my, my headphone, my headphone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is this is problem. Okay, thank you, Iga. Thank you. This is the recording, please. <laughs> you have it. Don't worry. <laughs> we are going to upload it on our YouTube channel. Okay. YouTube. Channel, please. Bye, Bye. Sorry, everybody. I'm not sure I saw the YouTube channel. Was it supposed to be? No, we'll share it with you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good night.
Inka, you said something. Please end the meeting. Yes, thank you. End the meeting. <laughs> <laughs>